the way you build speed in season is you have a couple sessions a week where you hit top speed. Now, that can look like many different things. Uh, personally, the way I would do it is I, I would time it. I, I would use free lap or arena gear or dasher or whatever. There would be three or four lines. Um, we would go through a couple sprint drills. Um, we would help people that don't do the sprint drills well. Uh, basically, it'd be like a mini track practice. It would take about 20 minutes. And that would be our warm up. Um, we, we would not warm up in addition to that. Uh, everybody would do two sprints. They could either do 40s or we could do uh, probably my favorite thing would be a 10 yard fly. Do that twice with about five minutes rest with a group of 40 or 50 football players. That would, uh, if you got three lines going, that would take something like, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. I'd write down the times. Uh, just as important as writing down the times is yelling them out. Uh, I actually witnessed uh, a speed workout one time where no one was aware of their time. And when I yell out times, I yell out times, not just to the person who just ran, but also to the group that's about to run. Because, because athletes are naturally competitive. Humans have two survival instincts. One is to belong and one is the other one's status. And so we are constantly thinking about our status and that's our status versus who we used to be. Um, so improvement's really important. It's also uh, a competition among friends. And uh, I, I say that people, when they, when they do a sprint and hear their time, they either celebrate or swear. If, they, if, if, if that happens, then you know that that you got it going. You, you got, you're, you're doing things right. Also, when you yell the time back to the kids that are about to run, uh, oftentimes you'll see talk about that time. Once again, that's, that's when you know you are feeding those athletes. I call it feeding the cats. So um, two, we're getting back to the original premise, two times getting people up to max speed. I do not believe, well, we would not do accelerations. We wouldn't do 10s. We wouldn't do 20s because uh, because that's not max speed. And max speed is the tide that lifts all boats. Max speed, this is fascinating. Uh, I talked to uh, Kyle Bolton um, from TCU when he spoke at our track football consortium in California last year. And I asked them, you know, they, they became famous for in-season speed training. I said, Kyle, I thought I knew the answer to this question. I said, Kyle, how come you speed train three times a week in season? I thought he was going to say because speed is the tide that lifts all boats, that we want to be the fastest version of ourselves at the end of the season, not at the beginning. That's where I expect it. His one word answer was health. Health, which is, I'll never forget it because it was unexpected, but it's true that that couple things. One is the exposure to max velocities does make you healthier. Uh, people that feed the cats or sprint-based football, the things that, that, that I promote, report back to me that they've pretty much eliminated soft tissue injuries. Of course, they also do, if you join up with a feed the cats, sprint-based football plan, you're probably doing RPR too, reflexive performance reset. So the combination of exposure two or three times a week to max speed with RPR creates a healthier team. There's one other reason why that team becomes healthy. If you're aware of sprint times during the season, your practice plan will be adjusted. If you find that your team is running two miles an hour slow on Wednesday, you got to say, what in the hell is wrong? What did we, oh, maybe it was the four hour practice on Tuesday. That was stupid. We, we, we burnt the steak on Tuesday. We let Tuesday ruin Wednesday. What are we doing? What are we doing? If, so, so once you start paying attention to max velocities, you adjust your training schedule to keep your guys healthier, fresher, which means more athletic. And any football coach or soccer coach or rugby coach, any coach that does not want the healthiest version of his team 
day to day to day. I mean, not just on Friday nights, but every day during the week. Any coach that doesn't care about the health of their team during the week is not getting much done in practice. So, so that also contributes to this health concept of max velocity training. Uh, I, I do want to add, and I think this is really important, that that yes, we prioritize max velocity during the season, but that priority simply means that it's really important and we do it when we're fresh. That does not mean we spend 90% of our practice volume sprint training. A lot of people get all confused about priority. No, if you're a football team, you're going to spend 90% of your time on football or maybe 95% on football, 5% on exposure to max velocity. So it's a very, very small investment, but it's probably the most important investment in my opinion.